business owner or speaker, and but I tell you, this guy I've seen I've seen him speak before, and I just adore him, and I'm kind of biased. I love you too. Yeah, and I got to square dance with him too. And, last year's public speakers conference. Make sure we're doing it on tractors. <laughs> and we're gonna make sure we're gonna do it on tractors, exactly. <laughs> he sent me a video, it's wild. Frank Gustafson has invested the past 30 plus years in executive leadership and as an entrepreneur. Frank, a native Texan, spent 24 years on the frozen tundra of Minnesota before selling his last company and moving back to Texas in 2013. Yippee! I added that, is that okay? <laughs> he is an entrepreneur and much recently a Gallup certified strengths coach. I was very excited to hear about that certification. A John Maxwell certified coach, leadership trainer, and speaker. Outside of his family, Frank has three passions, leadership, entrepreneurship, and helping U.S. service members transition successfully into the civilian marketplace. That's so awesome. Today, Frank is going to talk to us about using our biggest assets as entrepreneurs and speakers. Everyone, please welcome Frank. Thanks, Mr. Would you mind if I move this back over? Because I, I am not, I'm not a perfect person, which I, so I fit in great here. But I will fall over everything that's up here. Okay. I promise. Not a problem. since probably 2007, and I just recently finished up my certification as a Gallup Strength Coach. And I live and breathe, and if you cut me, I bleed strengths. I really believe that, that they help us with the three J's of public speaking. John, make your message sing. Jim, be yourself. And James, be authentic. Those are three things that I heard earlier. And I believe that as we work and, and as we speak and as we do the things that we do out of our strengths, all three of those things come to the forefront. I believe that our strengths are our biggest assets. How do we use them as a speaker? I want to play for you a quick, it's about a minute and 50 seconds, and this is Marcus Buckingham talking about kind of what strengths are all about and how they work. Uh, Marcus Buckingham was a member of, was, was an employee of the Gallup organization for 17 years, and he was part of the duo. He and, and, and Don Clifton wrote the book, Now Discover Your Strengths. Don Clifton is the father of positive psychology, the father of strengths-based psychology. So, please, technology, don't fail me now. <laughs> uh, moments, moments where you get to feel like you're really using your strengths. Where you, where you get in a zone where, where the right decisions just just come so easily to you. Or, or when you feel creative without really trying and you, and you just got one idea after another. Where you feel, you feel challenged in just the way that you like to be challenged. Or moments when you dive into something and you get so involved in it, so focused on it, that when you're done with it, you're not tired. In fact, you're kind of fulfilled and you, and you almost wish that the activity that you were doing, well, your whole job was that activity. Moments like that, work can be great just because it can show you how great you can be. So wouldn't it be great? I mean, wouldn't it be great if you got to play to your strengths most of the time? If you could find a role where you play to your strengths for most of your working day. I mean, how cool would that be? Well, it'd be cool, but the research shows that actually very few of us manage to get to that place. In fact, if you ask this exact question, if you ask what percentage of your typical workday do you spend playing to your strengths, if you, if you actually ask people that question, what you get back is that less than two out of ten of us, less than two out of ten of us actually get to play to our strengths at work. I'm not an idealist. I didn't, 
I don't know about you, but I didn't expect that number to be 80%. I didn't expect eight out of 10 people to say, yeah, we skip to work, we play our strengths most of the time. I mean, there's a reason they call it work, right? But two out of 10, actually less than two out of 10, it's actually 17%. It just seemed really low to me. And I suppose, well for me anyway, that begs a question. And that question is, are you one of the two out of 10? And if you aren't, how do you get to be? I love Marcus Buckingham. And I love public speaking. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about my strengths and why I love public speaking. When I, when I sit up in the evening and I, and I develop a speech, by the way, I am a Toastmaster, so I gave everybody an evaluation form, and I would love your critique on this speech, okay? When I sit up at night and I'm developing my message, and I'm working through this, I always, I always do what Robert does, and I run it by the boss. And I say, hon, what do you think? And she's, she's an amazing person, and she's got some amazing strengths, and she gives me a lot of great critique. And, and I make some changes, and then I work on this thing. This morning, the, last night I worked on this thing until three o'clock in the morning. And when I was done, I wasn't spent. I couldn't even, I couldn't sleep last night. The night before I give a speech, I am jazzed up. I can't sleep, I'm excited, I'm ready to get in there, I'm ready to get this thing done. And, it's, and it, a lot of it has to do with my internal, intrinsic, God-given strengths. Has anybody heard of Gallup and heard of StrengthsFinder? John, I know you've taken the StrengthsFinder uh, assessment. Have you taken the StrengthsFinder assessment, Alicia? Right, if you, have you taken it? Who, who else has taken the, the assessment? If you can, write down your, your, your five strengths if you remember them, because I'm gonna ask some questions here at the end and talk about how you utilize your strengths to bring authenticity, to help you be yourself when you're speaking and to make your message sing. That's important. Gallup is an amazing organization, 75 years old. They've, they've researched everything under the sun and they've come up, they've, they've taken these, these 34 strengths and, and they, 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 they had hundreds and hundreds of talents that they boil down into these 34 talents. And, and you take a talent and you invest in that talent and you turn that talent into a strength. This is the second edition of StrengthsFinder, and this is not just the number one book on Amazon. Actually, it's, it's, it's not number one anymore on Amazon, but it's still, five, six years after it was written, it's still in the top 50 on Amazon. 23, 24 million books, that's pretty good. This is not just a book, it's a movement. Over 12 million people have taken this StrengthsFinder assessment through the Gallup organization. The core of the strengths movement is really to focus on what's right instead of focusing on what's wrong. Focus on your strengths instead of focusing on your weaknesses. Peter Drucker, everybody knows who Peter Drucker is. I hope you can read that from the back there. Peter Drucker, a, a really, really smart guy, says when you focus on your strengths, you make your weaknesses irrelevant. Focus on your strength to make your weaknesses irrelevant. Has anybody heard of John C. Maxwell? Sure. Last year, John Maxwell was named the number one leadership and management expert by Inc. <clears throat> Magazine. The dude is good. He knows his stuff. John Maxwell says if you take a weakness and you put it on a scale from one to 10, let's say you're a three, whatever it is, whatever it is, you're a three and you work and you invest and you work so hard to try to drive that up, to try to, 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 try to uh, improve that weakness. At the most, you're probably gonna improve it about two points. So you go from a three to a five, and guess what, you're still ineffective. Administrative, accounting are huge weaknesses of mine. I can go get a, and, and, and grind away and get a, you know, a, an advanced degree in mathematics, and I would still suck. That map. And not only that, my hair would get a lot grayer and I would end up with ulcers. It just does not, it doesn't do what Marcus Buckingham said in the, in the beginning there. It doesn't energize me. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't pull me forward. Like I said, there's 34 talent themes and they fall under four theme domains. 
These are the four theme domains. There's executing, there's influencing, there's relationship building, and there's strategic thinking. Okay. John, give me a, uh, a, a, one, of your, one of your talents, one of your strengths. Woo. Woo. I knew that about you. That's an influencing thing. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Alicia, what about one of yours? Achiever. Achiever. Achiever is one of the most common. Achiever is an executing thing. You like to get things done. Let's break these down a little bit. So, executing is more present oriented and more task oriented. Relationship building is more people oriented and more present oriented. Influencing is more future oriented and more people oriented. And then strategic is task oriented and future oriented. How do you how do you use these talents when you're communicating? How do you use these talents when you're speaking? One of my talents is and I've developed it into a strength, it's belief. I have a very strong belief system. It's, it's in the core of me, it's who I am. I will never ever, you will never hear me talk about a topic that violates my belief system. It just won't happen. And if I try, you're gonna say, he's faking it, because it's gonna, it's gonna be absolutely obvious. Executing, folks in the executing domain know how to make things happen. They know how to get things done. The influencing domain. Woo. John, there you are. The influencing domain, you folks know how to take charge. You would think that that, that woo would be under relationship building. Woo is, is, is about winning people over. Let me tell you a little bit about woo is such an interesting, such an interesting talent, such an interesting thing. John will walk into a room, and just like he did today, and his objective, who did he say hi to? Does anybody, did anybody, did John say hi to anybody this, tonight? Yeah, to just about everybody, because that's what he does as a woo. Woo stands for winning, other, winning others over. John is socially fast and outgoing. True? Yeah. John takes the social initiative. He's got energy in social situations. He is has social, very, he requires social variability. He loves meeting someone he hasn't met before. I'm what's called a relator. So John will walk into a room of 100 strangers and those are 100 friends that he just hadn't made yet. I walk into a room as a relator and I'm looking for the three, two or three people I know, we're gonna go over in the corner and drive our relationship deeper. It's important that you understand these things because that, when you operate, when you're authentic, when you're authentic, in your speech, it comes across and it, and it wins people over. They understand that you really care. Relationship building. There's where my relator comes in. Listen, does anybody here have empathy? Empathy? Okay. Empathy is, is... Not according to my wife. Yeah, well, empathy is... <laughs> discipline is number 34 for me, and empathy, empathy is probably 33. But empathy is... is is interesting because folks with empathy have the ability to, on a different level, connect with other people. On a different level, connect with their audience. They can feel what they're feeling. It's just it's an innate ability. Is that is that true? Yeah. You can just you, you can talk to people and you just can, can kind of feel what what they feel. From a speaking perspective, that is so incredibly important. It's, it's difficult for me because I don't have that, and I have to try to think about how I can use my strengths to overcome the fact that I just don't care what other people are thinking. Say <laughs> 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 what you will. How do you feel about it? Wait, when I, when I, the time that I care is when I'm reading your evaluations and I go, ah, oh, that's crap. And then I go home and I talk to the boss and she says, relax. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. They're just trying to help. Okay, fine, they're trying to help. Did they even listen? <laughs> Relationship builders, the folks in these, in these themes are really good at building strong relationships. And then this is kind of where I shine. And this is, this is the strategic thinking themes. I am number one strategic and number two futuristic. Is anybody in here strategic or futuristic? Yes. As a, as, as a futuristic person, 
I really, really want to help you understand that strengths-based development is transformational. It is absolutely transformational. I've seen it time and time again. The, when I first got involved in strengths was, like I said, 2007. I was an executive, I was, a, I was an executive VP of a telecommunications company that we started with five people. We grew that business probably over the, this was about 10 years in, 10, 12, 13 years in. We had taken that business to about 200 people and about $100 million in revenue. A lot of things were going on in this company. A lot of things were going on in this company. And we were doing a lot of mergers and acquisitions. We were taking on partners and doing things like that. And the IT functionality in that realm is extremely important. Well, we had an IT director that kind of had built this, this fiefdom, and it was the IT group against the rest of the world. Well, he <clears throat> kind of abruptly kind of got quit. Yeah. I'll put it nicely. I'll try to be empathetic <laughs> there. He got quit. and. We were without an IT director. I'm sitting in a, in a meeting with the owner of the company and the other two executive vice presidents, and Tom says, Frank, I want you to take over IT. I said, whoa, I'm not an IT guy. I love technology, but I'm not an IT guy. He said, we don't have, we don't have an IT problem. We've got a people problem. I want you to get in there and fix this thing. So I went in with Marcus Buckingham's book, and, and we read the book together. Not, not sitting around the table reading it together, but everybody read the book. We, we created a chart with what everybody's strengths were, everybody's talents were. There were some people that it was obvious that they probably wouldn't fit on the team, so we moved some folks out of the team. And within a couple of weeks, this entire team had transformed. That's strengths for me on a, on a professional level. On a personal level, I am a stubborn Swede. Anybody know any stubborn Swedes? I am stubborn and I'm Swedish. My name's Frank and I'm here to help. <laughs> I, my wife, on the other hand, is a hot-blooded Italian. <laughs> Take stubborn and hot-headed and put those two together and man, we struggled in our marriage at the beginning. We struggled. Well, we both read Marcus Buckingham's book and we shared and we talked about our strengths and the way that our strengths played together and played against each other, and we realized. I thought she was trying to finish me off, and she was actually trying to complete me. There's a difference. So it was transformational for us from, from a marriage perspective. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I cannot express enough how passionate I am about seeing people take this strengths-based development piece and transform their life and move to the next level and become better speakers, become better communicators and bring value to their audience. It is so important to, to, to be truly authentic, to truly be yourself and to truly make your message sing. You've got to understand who you are intrinsically, who you really are. So futuristic is one of my strategic. So not only can I yeah, it's not it's not clairvoyance, all right. I can't I can't tell you what's going to happen when we leave here today, but I can kind of see the future. I can look down the road in any given situation and say, this is where we're headed. This is where that's probably going to wind up. And then from the strategic perspective, I can I can pick a great path to get there, a path that will achieve our goal. So really, there's there's three things that that are that are tied into the whole strengths-based development process. And number one is to is to name your strengths, and that is to find out what they are. Find your, find out what your talents and strengths are. Number two is to claim them, and this is how I've claimed them. And then the third part is to aim them. So I, you've got to know your strengths, you've got to honor your strengths, and you've got to keep it real. These are the words that I use. I, my, I'm, my, I'm gonna put my hand in my pocket. Is that right? I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna put this one in this pocket. That will probably be uh, distracting. Yeah. Okay. I. These are the. These are the, the phrases that I use to describe who I am. I am a passionate pathfinder. That's my strategic. I'm an influential visionary. That's my futuristic. I'm a creative catalyst. And what that is, that's activators. Anybody here have activator? Activators 
our, our folks that are, we're going to, man, when you're with me, we're going to have, there's going to be some action. We're going to move somewhere. It may not be the right place, but by God, we're moving and we're going somewhere. And, and we'll do it creatively, I'm a creative catalyst. I'm an inspiring believer. I have a firm set of core beliefs and I like to use them to inspire people. And I'm a loyal server. That is my responsibility piece. When I tell you that I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do something. When I tell you that I'm gonna come and speak to, to you as a group, then by God, even though I wasn't ready last night and, and the boss made a lot of changes in my speech at about 10 o'clock last night, I was gonna get it done and I was gonna be here and I was gonna deliver it by hook or by crook. When I read my evaluations, we'll find out how we did. But I'm here. Let's talk about your strengths. Who wrote down some strengths? And I'd like to kind of maybe expose those strengths a little bit by, by reading kind of what they are, and then maybe we can just kind of have a discussion and talk about how you can use that in your communication realm. Anybody want to throw one out? Maximizer. Maximizer. I, I love Maximizer. Maximizer is probably about number seven for me to hit L. Alphabet, I've got alphabet. Numbers no good, alphabet, I've got that. I put these in alphabetical order for a good reason. So this is what a maximizer is. People who are exceptionally talented in a maximizer theme focus their strengths as a way to stimulate personal and group excellence. They seek to transform something strong into something superb. Does that resonate? Absolutely. They are committed to excellence. They focus on what is strong and manage around what is weak. They bring a quality orientation. You love quality. You want to, if you're going to do something like that, you're going to do it right. How does that help you as a speaker? Where do you? How do you use your maximizer theme as somebody who communicates with an audience? This is not. This is not a rhetorical, question. Not a rhetorical no. question. I apologize. I didn't. I forgot to say this is not a rhetorical <laughs> question, and I apologize for apologizing. <laughs> but, but he really doesn't care. <laughs> well, in terms of uh, really focusing on what I do when I when I speak, and I'm not I haven't done it in long. But when I do my work with nonprofits, I take what what they're doing well, and I find out what their what their long the short long term visions are. I say. Here's what you're going to need to do over the next 90, 180 days to make your program that's a six or seven. We're going to make it a nine or ten. Because you're committed to excellence, okay? and you maximize on return on investment. Yeah. If it's a two or three, I just I would just say find somebody else. And if you were working in an area that was not your strength, if you if, I don't want to call it a weakness, let's call it a lesser strength. But if you were working in an area where you were maybe a three or a five or a, or a, or a two. That message wouldn't, that, it might be exactly the same message, but it wouldn't come across the same. It wouldn't be as, it wouldn't, it, it, you wouldn't be able to make that message sing. Anybody else? Carol? I want to talk about a combination. Yeah. Because there's five there. So here's a combination of analyst, achiever, and connectedness. So how do those three because they're each in a different quadrant, how do they work together to create a skill set or a giftedness? Analytical, achiever, and connectedness. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, my alphabet didn't work. I didn't grab analytical. <laughs> well, that's all right. You but that's okay. Is. Analytical is somebody who's just who's really who's really kind of in the weeds and the details, right? And then an achiever is somebody who is a, is a extremely hard worker. You set the pace for product for production. You're intense. You have got in, intense stamina. And then what was the third one? Connectedness. Connectedness. I really do care about connectedness. Because it's the, a little bit different than empathy, but similar. Yeah, uh, uh, connectedness. It, uh, incredibly aware of the, of the borderless and timeless human family. So you are someone who, who 
understands and cares about how we all work together. Not just the people in this room, but the entire globe. And not just the people on the entire world, but how it was done in the past, how it's done in the future. Everything's connected together in some way, form, or fashion. So as an analytical, you're gonna study that and you're gonna try to find out what those things are and you're gonna bring those together. And as an achiever, you're gonna, you're gonna be dogged at that. And you're gonna make sure you've got it and you're gonna run until you have it and it's not gonna ever bring you down until you, it, 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 it. and when you achieve it, you are given energy mm -hmm. by it. Does that sound like you? Yeah, because it's yeah. insights. Yeah. It's insights and communication are the big things for me. And as you do that, as you speak, when you bring that to an audience, it, it, it comes out of you, it, it excites people, it energizes people. You could probably sit and talk about the analytical piece, and I am probably 32 in analytical, right? But you could probably sit and talk about that and, and, and explain how, kind of how everything is connected together and how it all works mm -hmm. and, and even get me excited about it. Even me. And I would probably care. <laughs> One more? One more? Competition. Competition. Huh. I've been coaching a, a guy who is a, a former Army Lieutenant Colonel. And one of his big things is competition. He is, he is so competitive. Competition is number eight for me. And it's a, actually a fairly rare, uh, it's a fairly rare talent. It doesn't show up a ton. Being, you, you like to be aware of your competitors. You strive to win. You have an aspiration to do your best. You need, you need other people to compare yourself with. Because how do you know if you're, if, if you're excelling if you don't, if there's not some, you have to have somebody to chase and you have to have somebody to pass. So there's always gonna be people in front of you and there's always gonna be people that you're passing. And you probably, and I know you probably have other talents that are gonna help bring those people along with you. I know, I know, I know you, you're not just all about go, go, go competition. You love a chance to go against the best. When you're speaking at Toastmasters, if you're speaking against a, a speech number one, it's probably not as motivational for you as if you came to our club on on November 10th and, and spoke where Marty is doing his final speech for ACG. That's that's some code talk, don't worry about it. You don't care any of this. <laughs> so you need somebody to compete with that is that is way up there. And that brings you up. Any other questions about strengths? I've got, I've got 30 more slides that talk about some of the cool things about strengths, about how it makes you more, it makes you more connected at work. It makes, you, it makes you more profitable. There are studies that show that salespeople, and if we're entrepreneurs, we're all salespeople, that salespeople that work in their strengths close six times or 6% more business, and their profitability is 10% higher than, people, than salespeople who don't work in their strengths. Who wants to close 6% more, and who wants 10% more profitability in the business that we do? We all do, right? Understanding and using your strengths <coughs> is, how else do I say it without, I mean, I've used the word amazing a thousand times, but it's freaking amazing. I love it, I love it. No more questions, I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes sir. Human resources people, and generally speaking, people I meet are all into the Myers Briggs thing. Right. They yeah. all know yeah. what yes. four letters they are. Yes. I mean, my wife took that 20 years ago and she thinks it's unchanged. This is just who she is. So, human resource yeah. people kind of like that and categorize applicants based upon or try to do quick and dirty evaluations. Why aren't more, or maybe I just haven't seen it, using this kind of methodology? in an evaluative sense. Many, many, many of the Fortune 500 companies are, out, are actually using strengths. Um, uh, Facebook uses it to, to, match, to match people to jobs instead of trying to job, match jobs. Uh, Rackspace, everybody knows who Rackspace is. Robert Scoble actually came out and said, if you, we've, all, on the back of their badge, they've got their, five, their top five talent themes. He says, if you see our chairman in the hall, don't start a strengths-based conversation with him because he will have you talking about, he will talk about his, the corporate culture and what strengths has done for their company for two and a half hours and you're not gonna get anything else done. 
There's some huge companies that are out there using it. It's a little more complex than Myers-Briggs. Myers-Briggs doesn't use the, the, uh, the psychometric algorithms that Gallup does. There's so much science behind what Gallup has done with this. And can I say amazing again? <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Would you mind if I just answered that question? Yes. Thanks. The Myers Briggs is a gigantic millions of people database. It's correlated with job. So what the specific goal in creating the Myers Briggs was for human resources management. So you can take the Myers Briggs and then you can say the likelihood is you will succeed in this job, and that's why they use it there. It doesn't mean that it. It doesn't do what this does, obviously, but that's what its purpose is. So, just just to distinguish for me, on the incoming side, Myers Bridge makes sense, but once you have somebody on board, then the strengths right. the, would seem exactly. to be. Strengths is development. Right. right. Myers Briggs is selection. Right. The strengths yes. is not selection. You don't want to use it for selection because if we just use it for for selection, everybody that has communication, everybody that has empathy, everybody has a certain strength that you think of as a good speaker. The rest of us would be out in the cold. But we can still be good speakers as long as we're operating inside of our strengths. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank cool. Very good. Thanks, Thanks for the yes, clarification. Yeah. So, what do you ask? So, for those who want to use their strengths as speakers, I, I assume first they need to find out what their strengths are. Yeah. But then, how would you apply those? How do you make them your biggest asset? When you, if you go to the to, to Gallup GallupStrengthCenter.com, you can you can take the assessments, 15 bucks. You're gonna get three reports from Gallup. One of them is gonna be kind of a generic top five. One of them is gonna be a more specific top five that says, here's how your five look with each other. And then you're gonna get an 18 page document that's gonna say, based on, your, based on your specific mix of talents, by the way, the chances of you having the same top five as somebody else is one in 33 million. Wow. The chance of you having the same 34 in the same order is is one in 19 undezillion. Wow. Now there has not been a there has not been a since the since the the first man walked Earth, there's not been an undezillion people. So there's not anybody that's got the same as you statistically. So. The way that you the way that you figure those things out and the way that you work through those things, there's a couple of ways. So you can do it on your own. You can there's a there's a great meetup run by a coach, a strengths coach who has been around for a long, long, long time. Um, excellent guy. Um, if you know, Carol, you talked about when you're going to speak, you, you want to generate revenue, and I thought about that, and, and I could do that. I, I am a strength based coach, and I and I love to coach people, and I'd be happy to. If you want to, if you want to get, if you want to get your your assessment through me, I'd be happy. Just talk to me afterwards. If not, if you want to get your assessment and then email it to me and set up a, a 30, 45 minute conversation, I'd love to walk you through some things and help you through some things completely free of charge. If you decide you want to engage me as a coach, we can look at that down the road. Are there any other questions? I was just gonna say, great job. Yeah. Excellent.